Hello everyone. In this video, we will be deriving our second equation of motion which is otherwise called as the position time relation. Now we already know what is the second equation of motion uh, that is s equals ut plus half at squared where s is the displacement, u is the initial velocity, t is the time taken and a is the acceleration of the body. Here I have a velocity time graph uh, AB which uh, shows that the body is in uh, uniform acceleration. Now in order to derive this relation we will be drawing a perpendicular from point B on x axis which touches x axis at point C. Now we know that the body has not uh, started from zero velocity but it had a certain initial velocity which is given by OA. So our initial velocity is given by OA which is U and the final velocity of the body is given by the length BC which we will take as V. So BC will be equal to V which is the final velocity and OA equals U which is the initial velocity of the body. Now OC is given by the time interval in which the body moves from A to B. So OC is given by time T. So OC equals T which is the time taken. Now uh, let the acceleration of the body A changes at a uniform rate which is apparent from the graph here and the displacement covered by the body we will be taking it as S let's say in time T. Now from the graph we see that the displacement of the body here is given by the area under the curve AB or area under the graph AB we can see. So here the area under the displacement is given by the area under the graph AB. So S which is the displacement is given by the area of the trapezium OABC. Here OABC is the trapezium and if we want to find the displacement of the body from A to B, we need to find the whole area under this graph which is AB and this area is given by the area of the trapezium OABC. Now this uh, shaded region, the area of the shaded region gives us the value of the displacement in this case. Now let us draw a perpendicular line from point A which touches BC at point D. This construction has been made to find the area of the whole trapezium. We will be finding the whole area of the trapezium by first finding the area of the triangle and finding the area of the rectangle OADC and then adding up these two areas. So that's the procedure that we are going to follow to find out the displacement. So let's move ahead. So here S equals the area of the triangle ABD plus the area of the rectangle OADC. Now we know what is the formula for the area of the triangle as well as for the area of the rectangle. The area of the triangle is given by half into base into height. We will be taking AD as the base of the triangle and BD as the height of the triangle. And for uh, area of the rectangle we already know which is length into breadth. Here the length we will be taking as OC and the breadth is DC of this rectangle OADC. So let's apply that formula here. So S equals half into base into height plus length into breadth. So S equals half into AD which is the base into BD which is the height of the triangle plus the length of the rectangle which is OC into OA which is the breadth of the rectangle. So this is the whole formula of uh, finding out this whole area of the trapezium OABC. Now this BD here is given by BC minus DC. When we subtract DC from BC we get BD. So we will be putting that here. In place of BD we will be substituting BC minus DC. We know the values of BC and DC right. So that is the reason why we have made this substitution here. Now 
we'll be substituting all the values of this ad we know that it is equal to oc ad is exactly equal to oc since it is the opposite side of a rectangle so it will be exactly equal to oc so ad is equal to t and we know bc which is the final velocity equals to v dc which is the initial velocity which is equal to the initial velocity oa that is u plus oc we know it is t and u is equal to oa which is already given in the figure so we have put all the values here in this equation now s will be equal to half v minus u into t plus ut on evaluating this expression we'll be taking this equation as our equation number 1 and we'll be using this equation later on in this derivation now from first equation of motion we know that v equals u plus at so v minus u will be equal to at so uh, let us take this equation as our equation number 2 here we'll be using both the equations now in the process of derivation so this is our equation number 1 which is s equals half v minus u into t plus ut and our equation number 2 was v minus u equals at now on substituting v minus u uh, from equation 2 to equation 1 in this place we have s equals half v minus u into t plus ut now in this place of v minus u we'll be adding at which is from equation number 2 so on doing that we have s equals half at into t plus ut which gives us s is equals to half at squared plus ut now on rearranging the terms we have s equals ut plus half at squared and this is our second equation of motion which we have finally got so this is how we derive the second equation of motion that is the position time relation i hope this video was helpful to you and as well as understandable thanks for watching tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning